Hello, YouTube. I apologize, I haven't been in the range lately. Right now, it's pretty much buried under two feet of snow, so it's not going to be anytime soon before I get there. But I wanted to go over this revolver here. This is my Ruger Vaquero in 45 Colt. And anybody that's seen my videos knows that I have a thing for Ruger revolvers. Uh, Black Ox, SP-101. And this is my second Vaquero. I had one once before, and it was a 7.5 inch barrel. But this one is in 45 Colt, and I paid $289 for this gun, which this it's a heck of a deal. You can't beat that uh, that deal. Now the finish on this, again, if you look at the finish, it's kind of worn. The bore is perfect. The rifling is perfect, and somebody tuned this gun. Uh, this thing is almost as close to what I would say a single action army is. I know there's some that are going to say, it doesn't have a four clicks like a Colt, so it's not as good. Well, I got news for you. This is about as close as you're going to get. And because it's a Vaquero, it's going to be a lot stronger than a single action army. And this is one of the early Vaqueros. This gun, I think, from what I checked, the serial number is right around 22, 23 years old. Uh, it's one of the earlier ones when they were a little bit beefier. They eventually made him smaller. And I personally like the bigger ones, the bigger uh, Vaqueros versus the smaller ones. But that's that's just a preference for a lot of people. The older Vaqueros, the first generation, are known for being able to take a tremendous amount of punishment. They made these in 44 Magnum. So if that tells you anything right there, what the frame can handle. And 45 Colt, you can, you can really get to round up there. Uh, as far as velocity-wise, you don't need to. Uh, I have found over the years I've had several 45 Colts. You really, unless you unless you plan on hunting large bear or really large animals, you really don't need to hot rod the 45 Colt. It's more about bullet design and what bullet you're going to use and the velocity coming out of it. Um, speaking of which, this is a silhouette target. These right here were shot at the combination of 7 and 10 yards. Offhand, one-handed, using my hand loads. And they're a combination of 250 grain semi-wad cutters and 230 grain Hornaday XTPs. And you can see how, how good they do. And even you get to the head of the target there and it's a little bit about the same. Same distance. And it's it's a wonderfully it's a wonderful shooting gun. It really is. And you know it's it's one of those guns. If you want to buy a revolver on a budget, look for one of these. They're cheap. They are cheaper um, to buy than trying to find a new one. But two hundred eighty nine dollars. This was at a gun shop, by the way. You, this is cheaper than the Italian guns. The Italian Colt clones. By a long ways. I mean, most of them now are between four and five hundred dollars for a good one, for a new birdie, and then the price continues to go up. And this gun, you're not going to wear it out. You can beat on it and beat on it and beat on it. I mean, yeah, you can you can break parts, but normal use, just normal shooting, you're not unless you really just crank the ro the the loads right out there. And again, you don't need to with 45 Colt. Um, you the gun will last forever. And I've got some plans for it. I'm not going to refinish this gun. I've had a couple offers to redo it. I probably will replace the ejector rod housing. I've already worked on the grips a little bit. You can see the grips are kind of... Um, I've, I've sanded the finish off of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the medallions. I'm going to put probably just one coat of true oil, maybe two. Just enough to protect the wood. But I don't want to really gloss these up like I've done... You've seen some of my other grips in the past or some of the other stuff I've done. I'm either going to do... Where the, I'm going to pop those medallions out. They're they're really too nice for this gun. If I can get this to focus here. You can see how nice they are. But I'm going to replace them either with antler. I may think maybe do an antler inlay. Uh, or... A couple of these. And these are... Let me focus in on that. You notice they're almost the same size as the medallion. Come on, focus, baby. There we go. Those are five, 
peso Mexican Eagle coins. That one is from 1888. My apologies that it's upside down. Let me turn that right side up for you. Those, that one particular one is from 1888. You see them on eBay a lot. They're, they're pure silver. They're not worth a great deal. And you notice they're about the same size the medallion is. They're not much bigger. I can uh, I can smooth that out a little bit and make that hole just about the same size to put that medallion that little uh, that little five peso coin. I've already got the one. I don't know if I'll try to get one from the same year or not, but it, I think it'd look much better. It'll get. It, I want this gun to have a used look. I don't want a new looking gun here. So, and the other thing I wanted to talk about was holsters. And because you see, I've been seeing a lot of videos lately where people are just going around with some of the crappiest holsters they can get their hands on. Spend the money on a good quality holster. Now, this is a Simply Rugged holster. I've been buying Simply Rugged holsters for the better part of 10 years, if not more. And Rob Leahy, who runs Simply Rugged, is one of the nicest guys you're ever going to want to talk to. There, he builds quality material. These holsters are tough. They're tougher than than most of the other, you know, like quality leather holsters out there. Um, you get them for uh, like this holster here was under hundred dollars. But people are like, well, I don't want to spend that much. If you want to buy a quality holster to do the work, you need to spend the money. I mean, you don't have to spend two, three hundred dollars. This is, again, a $100 holster. It's not, I think, probably $85 or $90. I don't quote me on that. Um, but if you go to his website, you'll see he's got a, a ton of different options. Again, I've been buying his stuff for years. Don't go out there and spend $10 on some cheap, crappy import or surplus holster. Yeah, I mean, it depends what you're using it for. If you're going to carry a gun a lot and you want a good carry holster, a concealed carry holster, Spend the money and buy something decent. You know, you don't want to go out and buy some holster from the Ukraine on eBay for ten dollars because you're just you want to spend you want to hold on the money to spend on your video games and pizza because you're just too damn cheap. You, you know, you you need to go out and buy something decent. You need to go out and buy a quality piece of material, quality leather. And these are these are it. I okay. I have my Makarov pistol. That came with an East German police pistol, uh, police holster. Great for what it was designed for. It was designed as a border for you know a border guard or for a police officer. It was a duty holster, and it, for its job, it worked. But I don't carry it in that holster. I carry it in another simply rugged holster. I carry it in a small Cuda, what they call that particular model, and that's what I carry it in. You know, spend the money. Don't be some freaking cheap dumbass. Who is too, you know, either ill-informed or because for some reason they want to carry a, a gun in a surplus holster. I, I don't understand why, the, why you have to just buy some cheap, crappy holster. Spend the money and carry a, a decent carry. You're 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 going to be carrying a gun for protection or for even just use outside. You want it to last. You want to be able to carry it without dropping it or having it fall and go off and blow a hole in your floor. Carry a decent holster. Spend the money. Don't don't be an idiot. So, I just wanted to co you know kind of go over that with you, and hopefully again, um, within the next month or so, we can get to the range and hopefully start doing some different videos. I've got a couple of lever action rifles that I've been playing around with and looking at, and uh, one happens to be in 348 Winchester, and I will let you all figure out what that is. And I'm hoping to have that all worked out within the next month or so. Um, doing a little bit of horse trading there. And if that, hopefully that'll all time out with when warm weather gets here. Or warmer. So, with that being said, YouTube, have a good day. Hope to get some more videos out fairly soon.